do have a, a guest for you first of all and uh, it's i'm pleased to say once again it's uh, an ex kettering town player who went on uh, to lesser city and Hull city among others it's uh, none other than laurie dudfield welcome laurie once again to poppy's tv much. how are we i'm good thank you how are you absolutely average <laughs> absolutely average <laughs> nothing changes nothing then. changes there then but uh, last time that um, you uh, were on we didn't record it so uh, unfortunately for you some things never change some yeah, things never right. change but uh, you had an american team over um, playing one of the future lion sides and how have things progressed since then good yeah we've uh, we have around about 450 500 people over this year so um we've got a lot of lot of people coming uh, I'm, I'm based over there now anyway in the states so uh so petersburg you said to me so petersburg in florida yeah so um horrible climate isn't horrible, it horrible horrible yeah <laughs> um so we have to make sure i slap the uh, cream on obviously um but yeah uh, great we've got a lot of people coming over playing coming to play teams and for me it's about exposing them to real football um i've got to get back into the football not soccer phase now um on this side of the pond but um yes yeah, about exposing to real football and that for me is playing teams like kettering town obviously a club close to my heart and you're not scouting as you're mansfield and we we're just talking about it in the, in the room about how football's almost gone from wanting to play for man city which is amazing but it's not real football you know and almost see it as playing lower league is a failure when it's still one in a million stuff so how many of our teenagers actually get a game for these premiership clubs that's one or two now but they're exactly. going to germany aren't they to enhance their careers exactly so myself and alan smith um, former manchester united leeds obviously uh, we're out based out in the states and we have this conversation all the time would if we were having our time again where, where would we be would we go into a man city and the honest answer is no we wouldn't we i'd want to be at a, a notts county a, uh, you know, catching again as it was and started and go into the system that way. So and play games. I think it's important now to to play games. How do, how do you see American football developing? American soccer, sorry, yeah. developing as opposed to the other game we won't mention. But um, um, well, I get to see it obviously firsthand now. Um, is it improving? Uh, it's improving. Um, the money dictates that it will improve, but this this the quality is not there still. You know, there, there are players coming through the system, but there's a lot a lot of flaws. Um, their youth soccer. Um, compared to ours, if we had say um, Eyes Lodge, I was at Eyes Lodge and Grange United when I was a kid. It's you know five pound a week probably now. I don't know three pound a week in uh, in America. That's three, four, five thousand dollars a year to play at that level. Um, and it's it's just whilst that pay for plays in place, it's, it's a completely different game. I was uh, in Texas and they had a, a team at TCU and it was football was developing in those days in the eighties. You had people like uh, Peter Osgood and Rodney Marsh out there. Now you've got Wayne Rooney and uh, yeah. But uh, American f uh, soccer was basically a college sport in those days. Yeah, I mean the, the college system is amazing and I love bringing the college teams over here because they can compete they're still playing down a couple of years against the under 18s here but but uh, you know college is pretty much like our non-league in some respects you know, in terms of the facilities are probably better they are uh, aren't but they? the access to training and, and the matches and obviously with the draft system um love it or hate it it's a fantastic opportunity to get into the mls you know whether they actually whether there's an end product not very often so there are different divisions aren't there mls gets a lot of um sort of airtime on sky etc but there are yeah. other divisions and other leagues below that aren't there yeah, there's USL. So uh, I'm I live in St. Petersburg, so, so uh, Tampa basically. And Joe Cole's been up there the last four years at the Rowdies in the USL. So there's some good players playing at at, at that level as well. So uh, and then there's you know the, equally there's guys in the MLS that have gone a guy called Dom Dwyer, probably nobody's heard of, got released by Norwich, went out there, went to college, got drafted, and is now actually playing, believe it or not, for the American national team. He's he's a citizen. He's married the top striker for the American women's team and um place Orlando City it's going all around there <laughs> yeah it's, it's so um so yeah it's, I mean there's so many opportunities now you know it's, it's great for that but for me you can't beat real football and that how is, does uh, it compare though um would you say attendance wise and popularity wise compared to baseball American football basketball and ice hockey is it the fifth sport is it the third sport how is it doing compared to well those? it's the fastest growing game um in America uh, I would honestly say now with football in particular american football you know with the concussion problems and all that a lot of parents now are taking them to uh, away from that and playing soccer i would say it's probably in the the top certainly in the top three um really competing in rounds and netball really isn't it yeah, um, so, yeah <laughs> um but there's other issues you know they can't, they're not allowed to head the ball before they're 12 in america so they play football you head the ball it's a free kick it's going in it's on the goal line you head it in you can't you can't do it so surfaces is it all 3g 4g out there or do yeah, you have grass as well lots of grass pitches as well um you know they, listen they, they, we're over there, really lucky. There are sport for some fantastic facilities. It's, there's stuff that kids' teams are playing on, which we would, you know, better than uh, probably some conference teams and their main stadiums. And there's uh, universities over there that have got better training facilities than some Premier League teams. It's 
So the money, it's not the money that's the problem, but they, the problem is, I think, is that they can, uh, they own all the other sports and now they're trying to treat soccer, football, as uh, a sport that they own and they don't. So that's going to their downfall, really, because they're chasing the rest of the pack. I always used to think that Americans invented sports they could only win at. Um, yeah. Well, they're world uh, champions and they only play baseball uh, in exactly, America. Exactly, and the so. same with American football. It yeah. um, is only really them that um, take part in it. Ice hockey, there's probably two or three nations, isn't there? But uh, yeah. football is a universal sport and... Uh, you know they are developing, which is good for the world. I think really, Americans need to be up there, don't they, with the uh, other sides? And, Definitely. Play, like I say, player development is fantastic. But for me, I love to bring them here, have exposure to real football, and, and so play. Why are you here this afternoon? Really, just to visit, is it? Or uh, just to visit? I'm back for no, I'm back for the week uh, to see my kids uh, for half term over in the holidays, and um, and then they'll be coming out to me in Easter. And my little boy's mascot today, so um, he's doing a little bit, yes. So yeah. he's on the pitch kicking balls around, and uh, <laughs> Richie's told me that he's. Uh, He's got to play the catcher and his pathway is catcher and then Everton. That's the only pathway. So he's going to go down then, is he? Rather than <laughs> yeah, he's going to start at the top. And <laughs> he's going to really drop down. Go down. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, well, great to see you again, Laurie. Thank you. Remember much. seeing you as a, as a youngster yourself there uh, back at Rockingham Road in the early days when you were in the U team. You've done very, very well for yourself. I remember being out in, I think it was Greece once, and I met a Hull City fan and you just signed for them. I said, watch out, he'll score a few for you. And uh, you remembered there, I know that. But uh, Well, not, the catching for me is where it started. I said, so it's club close Bob to Mullen, wasn't it? That was, Bob uh, Mullen, yeah, yeah, took me to Kettering and to, uh, Leicester. to Leicester. And, um, you know, I remember my, my debut, I think Gateshead, 96. Um, what a venue that and, was. Well, at home. <laughs> home. Uh, yeah, Rock and Road, obviously, 2,200 there. And, you know, they're the memories that well, stick with me. I don't really, it sounds silly to everyone else, but I don't really remember that much about football. I remember the my team that I used to watch and, and Rock and Road and all these things. So they're the memories that I've stuck with me. So. Okay then, Laurie, thank you very much. Thank Brilliant you, to see you once again. You Enjoy too. this thank tropical you. sunshine of, uh, of Burnham <laughs> 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 compared to uh, Florida. But uh, hope you have a good afternoon. Thank and you very much. We'll see you again in Let's the see future. You again, yeah. Thank okay, you. Okay, Laurie Dunfield there, uh, ex-Catherine Town. Uh,